Well, they say tough times never last, only tough people do. But the situation in Agurleni doesn't seem like it will change anytime soon. This is, of course, despite residents continuing to tough it out. With over 3 billion rand in debt, the city is having a hard time keeping its uh, rather cash afloat. But also residents find themselves having to bear the brunt of poor service delivery as a result of this. And their financial strain seems to be crippling the city even further down. So ENC reporter Bulele Switi Jones is following these developments. So let's cross over now to him uh, to find out the very latest happening out in Guruleni. Bule, very warm good morning to you, colleague. I mean, from where you stand, what are some of the issues that uh, are marred uh, out in the city of uh, Guruleni that they're currently dealing with? Definitely. We are, are currently in Alberton and we're, of course, expecting the council to uh, deliberate and discuss the uh, metro's financial situation as well, which is crumbling down and essentially, like you said, has a knock-on effect on services in the city of, in the city of Ekurulheni, rather. Where we are, we are told that this is one of the most dangerous roads in Alberton as well, where residents constantly are getting mugged in this area. And ironically, this street is just right across the police station as well but just to unpack this for us i'm joined by michael uh hume and of course on the um about alberton residents association and of course uh, wayne robertson who owns a business here michael thank you very much for chatting to us once again today council must speak about this report the finances of the metro are a situation um a terrible situation and of course uh, having a burden on uh, the residents uh you know well-being and services being delivered as well what can you tell us i think there's no accountability uh, and it stems with everything when it comes from safety and security down to service delivery down to financial management there's just no accountability and that's what residents are calling for we want accountability let's show you something very quickly oh. have a look across the road this is a police owned uh, or should we say used uh, building it's actually flats that were made for the police of the alberton police station now our police station is in such a state that they are storing their files and stuff here inside their block of flats because there's no space to store them inside the police station. How do you expect these poor policemen to operate if the space that they're supposed to operate from is unfunctional? So how do you go and report a case and then expect it to be followed through? Mm. The truth is we have an MMC for safety and security that can actually take control of the situation and fix it, but nothing's being done. Have a look around the corner. All right. Yeah, let's take off. Let's, let's, let's have a look off. around the corner. Yeah. Ten years ago, ten years ago, they started working on an extra wing for our police station, a trauma centre and some more cells. Right. We're ten years down the line. You can see the state when you get around the corner. It's not built yet. They're busy, they're busy, they're busy, like Wayne said just now, they're busy taking off plaster of a building that they built 10 years ago. We had a hospital built in this town. It took a year to build one of the biggest med care hospitals in South Africa. But in 10 years, we can't build a wing on the police station, some toilets where they're supposed to go to the loo, and some, some sort of decent facilities for them to work from. What do you think councils should do? I mean, the city clearly has a, a, an issue. Of course, they're challenged by their finan the finances as well. What do you expect them to do? I think what they need to do is fire non-performing ministers. They need to fire the non-performing MMCs. They need to cut salaries in council if that's what the issue is. And they need to look at how do you send five people to do a one-man job? I think the wasteful, wasteful expenditure is a big problem. And I have a problem as well with the Auditor General. I mean, how do you give clean audits to a city that is about to be placed under administration? Is somebody closing their eyes and just wiping things under the table? That's the questions we as residents ask. Let me bring in Wayne as well. Wayne Robinson, thank you very much. You own a business in this area as well. But you are quite worried about the fact that you need to take out money out of your own pocket to clean the area and to have security around as well. That's correct. Um, everything that's been done here is done through the actual ratepayers themselves to try and make the area safer. You can't park a trailer across the road without them stealing the wiring off of it. You can't park your bucky in your own street without them taking the battery out of it. You watch how the decay is happening within our area and it's all to do with if we had a functional police station, I believe that the people that are within this police station would function and work properly. But when you can't actually go to a clean toilet or a clean office, how could you ever do your job fairly? With the right tools, the right job. I think that council needs to get out of their offices and actually come and see what's happening in the real of Alberton. You can't walk in the street without being mugged. It doesn't help going to report the case of being robbed of your phone because 
nobody's going to do anything about it because the files are lying dormant. There's nothing happening in the area. It's very sad. Michael, just come. You, you spoke about the issue of councillors as well and their performance. It's just, um, um, are you quite concerned about what you're hearing as well from the from I, the council I, performance? I, I, I mean, you look just on the side. There's just rubbish that's been illegally dumped there across the police station as well. Bule, we raise matters with the councillors. Don't get me wrong. We raise matters with the councillors all the time. I think sometimes they they come up with the excuse that their hands are tied. But then who are we supposed to go to? They're supposed to be our elected representatives. You know, they're supposed to be fighting our cause in council. And the truth is you get no real feedback from them. Uh, it's like Wayne says, if the residents associations don't get stuck in, we cleaned up the back of this police station maybe four or five months ago. If you saw the rubbish in the filth that was there, yeah, then you would have been shocked. Uh, you can see what the council does. They just throw their bags and stuff. You know, on the side. Last week we were at the R59 inside the stormwater drains because the council has just thrown the bags there. We report these matters. I take it upon myself to get in my car, go to the head of departments at the depots and get things sorted out for the residents because there is just no real urgency from anybody. Just before I let Wayne go again, Wayne, you were saying you may move out um, or have your business relocated somewhere else due to the DK of the infrastructure and the service delivery in the metro. That's correct. We are actually seriously looking at it because for the functionality of good customers coming to us, we are in a position where are they safe if they come to our area? Is there vehicle safe parking outside the area? Are you walking through the sewage when you're coming to my shop? It's a lot of things to contend with other than just paying your rates. Thank you very much. That's Wayne Robinson, of course, who owns a company or business rather in the area. And, of course, Michael Hume representing the residents in the area as well. Quite concerning stuff we're hearing from the residents here at Dumelo. And these are the issues council may have to look into. Stabilizing their finances being something which is most important, which will then, which will then um, abhor to the city having services. And most importantly, like residents are saying, transparency and accountability as well. Yeah. And one wonders exactly what it would take for municipalities to get to that level. I mean, if uh, the Auditor General's report is anything to go by, released earlier on this year, showing Bule that only 38 out of 257 uh, municipalities actually achieved clean audits, one wonders where is the taxpayer's money going in terms of ensuring that there is service delivery in the likes of Egurulene. I mean, when you look at the rubbish dump being just uh, piled on everywhere across the streets from where you stand at least, it's quite concerning in terms of what that municipality is doing. And we'll continue to place a closer eye on our municipalities in South Africa and what could be those challenges that they are experiencing, particularly in this financial year, but assuring that there is service delivery uh, across the board. Bulele Sweetie-Jones will come back to you, colleague, as soon as there are any other developments.